the 17th 18th centuries, Ukraine existed as an independent state formation within the Russian Empire, which was ruled by the Hetman, hence the name of the Cossack state Hetmanshchina. In 1764, Russian Empress Catherine II issued a decree on its liquidation. A year later, in 1765, the Cossack system in Slobodanshchina was liquidated. And on April 23, 1775, the Russian Empress ordered the liquidation of the Zaporizhian siege. To prevent widespread dissatisfaction of Ukrainians, it was decided to make the Cossack senior officers part of the Russian nobility. However, despite the firm stance of Catherine II, the thoughts of the return to the Hetmanate did not fade amongst the former Cossack senior officers. Here is how the outstanding Ukrainian historian Mikhailo Grushevsky described the situation in his multi-volume book titled History of Ukraine Rus. Although the Ukrainian gentle folk found various good sides to the new system of self drone and bureaucratic order and served the new power of the past as it could, the higher strata of Ukrainian citizens, the descendants of the Cossack senior officers and the clergy, despite their voluntary and involuntary reciprocation, their love for Ukrainian daily life, language and history was not extinguished. This was true Ukrainian patriotism. They reminisced about the former Cossack glory, Ukrainian independence and the autonomy of Hetmanshchina. Only certain brave souls, writes Khrushchevsky, refer to the old plans for the return of rights to Ukraine. One of the first to express disagreement with the orders of Catherine II was the grandson of the former general captain Fedor Mirovich. The young officer of the Smolensk regiment Vasil Mirovich was an associate of Ivan Mazepa. In July 1764, the year of liquidation of Hetmanshchina, he attempted to carry out a palace coup d'état to overthrow Russian Empress Catherine II. Vasil Mirovich is one of the representatives of the ancient Cossack race. As the captain of the Tsarist army, he realized that when Elizabeth Elizabeth died, the legitimate heir to the throne, Peter III, also known as Peter the Great, was eliminated. Catherine II ascended to the throne with dubious legitimacy. Peter the Great decided to stage a coup and put the legitimate Tsar Ivan VI on the throne. Він вирішив фактично здійснити переворот і поставити на престол легітимного царя Івана VI. Descendant of the throne Ivan VI was imprisoned in the Shelsburg fortress. According to Ukrainian historians, the coup may have been due to the desire of Mirovich to achieve the expansion of the political autonomy of Ukraine. At night, a group of soldiers led by Mirovich had captured the fortress. However, at that time, Ivan VI had been murdered by officers of the Internal Guard by the order of Catherine II. Mirovich was arrested and executed in September 1764. The act of the brave officer inspired the Russian writer Grigory Danilevsky to write a historical novel called Mirovich. In order to obtain a noble title, representatives of the Cossack senior officers had to prove the validity of their noble origin. Therefore, they sought such evidence in historical chronicles, Hetman's Universals and other reliable historical documentary sources. Certainly, in order to become nobility, it was necessary to show some papers and prove the antiquity of their family. But how could that be proven? We know that churches were the bodies of statistics statistics and registry officers, and the church records were preserved. In essence, it was a state archive, because the Orthodox Christian Church was authorized to keep records of people from birth and further. And that was already obvious. Born into a family of Sotnik, therefore not an ordinary Cossack, and so on. The study of the history of their kind forced many researchers to take up a pen and write the heroic history of the Ukrainian Cossacks, as was noted by the American professor of Ukrainian studies, Harvard University professor Alexander Ohlobin in his book, The People of Old Ukraine. Among the researchers, Timofey Kalinsky stands out with his low rank, who, having collected a lot of material, argued that Ukrainian Cossacks had a knightly rank in the noble estate and were in fact higher than the Russian nobility. Next, Professor Hlobin notes that the book titled History of Ukraine was written at the end of the 18th century. Its author was the foreman of the Starodubsky Karabinier Regiment, Arhip Hudobra. He originated from ordinary Cossacks. His history of Ukraine has not been preserved, but it is known that it had been imbued in anti-Russian spirit.
the protest against the oppression of Ukraine by Russia and the desire to restore its political rights were inherent not only in individual people. There were also circles of like-minded people who cherished dreams of restoring Ukrainian autonomy. One of those was the Novhorod Siversky Patriotic Circle, which united Ukrainian figures of patriotic autonomy. It acted in the period of 1770s-1790s. Its members defended the idea of the broad autonomy of Ukraine in the Russian Empire and focused their attention on the famous and heroic Cossack past. The Novhorod Siversky Patriotic Circle is interesting in that people had been exploring their past. It had a local historical character. People were exploring their past to prove their nobility, but that led to people realizing that their roots went back earlier than those of Moscovites, Tatars, and others when they started searching for their ancient roots. Accordingly, this influenced a self conscious of a certain part of Ukrainian elite. They began to understand that they had been an ancient people, which contributed to a certain degree of increased patriotic self-awareness. The descendant of a well-known Ukrainian family, formerly an officer and later a writer, the author of the famous Ode to Slavery, Vasil Kapnitz, belonged to the Novgorod Siversky Circle. He turned out to be one of those who dared to express their disagreement with the changes caused by the liquidation of the Hetmanate autonomy. In 1791, he went to Prussia to meet with its king. Among other issues, he made a proposal to actively support the idea of recreating an independent state in Ukraine in the event of war between Prussia and Russia. Vasil Kapnist, yes, he was a Vasil Kapnist is a typical representative of the Ukrainian Cossack senior officers. Probably for the last time, he attempted to use the option of interventionalism to free Cossack Ukraine by the hands of powerful European states. He visited the Kingdom of Prussia, which had been rising to its feet at the time of gaining momentum with the beginning of the Napoleonic Wars. He offered the head of the government of the kingdom all-round support from the descendants of the Ukrainian Cossacks if the Prussian army would, for example, appear in the Dnieper Ukraine. They listened to him attentively in Berlin, but no specific actions were taken, since the issue of the struggle against the export of the French Revolution had been on the agenda. That was who they had to fight, and the Russian Empire had been one of the influential and basic members of the anti-French coalition. The Prussian monarch saw the future of his empire only in close ties with Russia, so Kapnist basically had to return home with nothing. The last hope of the Cossack surgeon for external assistance in the liberation of Ukraine turned out to be hopeless. But this fact testifies that there had been many people in Ukraine who considered an armed battle with Russia. In contrast to the reaction of the Prussian government, the idea of liberty was constantly present in Ukrainian society. Each time there were oppositional sentiments which contributed to the creation of secret societies in 1920s. The Little Rus' secret society, which was founded by the leader of the Periaslavsky Uyez, nobility of Asyl Lukashevich in 1821, aimed to gain the independence of Ukraine. Cells of the society existed in Kiev, Poltava, Chernihiv and other cities. The Little Rus' secret society had close ties with the Society of United Slavs. That secret revolutionary organization operated in Novgorod Volynsky. It united officers who served in the Volyn and Kiev regions. The main task of the Society of United Slavs was the liberation of people from foreign power, the liquidation of the monarchical system and the creation of a federal union of Slavic republics. Later, these organizations merged with the Southern Society of the Decemberists. It was headed by the hero of the Battle of Borodno in 1812, 25-year-old Lieutenant Colonel Sergei Muravyov Apostol. The society included two of his brothers, Matvey and Ippolit. All of them were descendants of an ancient Ukrainian Cossack family. They spoke for the freedom of peoples within the Russian Empire and categorically refused to recognize the draft constitution of Pavel Pastel, in which no people had the right for self-determination. 
які представляли Південне товариство, які були розквартировані у Васильковій. The Moravian Brothers represented the Southern Society, which was quartered in Vasilkiv, and were representatives of the Chernihiv regime. They were great-grandsons of Hetman Danilo Apostol. They believed that every people living in the Russian Empire should receive their autonomous rights and should develop those autonomous rights. The Northern Society, headed by Pavel Pestel, defended the basis of the idea that Russia should be a single republic without a Tsar, but with very cruel Jacobian tyranny as a method of control. Accordingly, Pavel Pestel believed that there could be no peoples, that there was one people and there could be no other concessions for separatist or national movements. In this regard, the programs of the Southern and Northern societies were very different. The position of Sergei Moraviev Apostol was so convincing that another Russian Decemberist, Kondraty Rileyev, had a rather positive view towards it. Kondraty Rileyev, one of the Decemberists executed in 1826 after the Decemberists uprising, wrote in his poem Wojnarowski, it has long been time for Ukraine to become an independent power. The uprising of the Decemberists on Senate Square in St. Petersburg on December 14, 1925, did not have an ending described in Soviet history. It had a Ukrainian continuation. The Moraviev Apostol brothers in Vasilkiv near Kiev started the Chernigiv regime and is erection and headed towards Chitomir. There, the quartered regimes also rebelled, but the government troops suppressed the uprising. Sergei Moraviev Apostol was executed in St. Petersburg in 1926 with other Decemberists. According to the testimony of contemporaries, Tsar Nicholas I offered Moraviev a pardon as he was well acquainted with him, but the latter refused. By decision of the tribunal, several officers of the Chernihiv regime were sentenced to lifelong penal servitude. Over 100 people were subjected to corporal punishment and roughly 800 soldiers and officers were transferred to the Caucasus. The uprising was brutally suppressed, but it inspired the local population to fight against self dome According to the documents in Uman, Vasilkiv and Bilatserkva districts of Kyiv province, peasant uprisings continued for two consecutive years, all of which were brutally suppressed. So the attempts of the Tsarist government to painlessly equalize Ukraine with other provinces of the Russian Empire failed. Ukrainians always remembered that they and their ancestors were born free. Therefore, the opposition movement in Ukraine had been going gradually and could not be drowned by Russian ranks, titles or the provision of land with serfs. In the 19th century, the pattern of the struggle for freedom and independence of Ukraine was picked up by the descendants of Cossack senior officers who already had noble titles and high officer ranks. Their resistance was brutally suppressed by the Tsarist government, but it could never suppress the notions of freedom and independence.